They do it on the left. They do it on the right. They gaslight you. They manipulate you. They they promote narratives. And um, the only one who's not doing that is Robert F. Kennedy Jr. You a fan? Yeah, I am a fan. Yeah, he's the only one that makes sense to me. He's the only one that he doesn't attack people. He attacks um, actions and ideas. But he's um, he's much more reasonable and intelligent. The comments from Joe Rogan that you just listened to were interpreted by a lot of people as a soft endorsement of RFK Jr. And for good reason. You know, he's not explicitly endorsing him or saying that he's going to vote for him, but him saying that he's the only one who makes sense pretty heavily suggests that he will be voting for RFK Jr. But regardless of what Rogan meant, Trump and his supporters took it as an endorsement of RFK Jr. and an entire shitstorm ensued because of it. For example, here's what some of Trump's supporters said in response to that. Johnny Maga tweeted, Joe Rogan will go down as a guy who had a real opportunity to make a meaningful impact and squandered it. Sad. This person says, Joe Rogan thinks RFK Jr. is the only candidate that makes sense to him. Tell me how the F a man that wants to allow full-term abortions makes sense to anyone. Now, Cat Turd chimed in and here's where it got real serious. And he made this viral tweet, quote, so I've never been a Joe Rogan fan, can't stand him. Yes, he has a popular podcast, but I've always thought he was absolutely politically dumb. He's great at figuring things out two years after we do. What a legend. So did it surprise me when he endorsed idiot RFK Jr. today? LOL, no. We are talking about the same fucking idiot who endorsed Bernie Sanders, right? He's the podcast equivalent of a dumb blonde joke. He also tweeted out a poll asking who has the gayest, low IQ, dumb male blonde joke, political infant podcast in the world. And the only two options, as you can see, are Joe Rogan. Got him. By the way, I believe that Cat Turd is actually in his 50s or 60s, just FYI. So, you know. Kind of tells you the mentality about this individual based on his tweets. Very, very immature for his age. But he was once again in his feelings in the same way that he was in his feelings after Kyle Rittenhouse temporarily said that he wouldn't be voting for Donald Trump. But those attacks on people for perceived disloyalty, that is what is extremely culty about MAGA world. But if you want Trump to win, you know, I understand why losing Rogan would be disappointing to a sycophant like cat turd you know he has the largest podcast in the world and his audience i would imagine is disproportionately right leaning so if he gets them to support rfk jr over donald trump that could actually hurt him especially in states where it's going to be pretty close but what's funny about all of this is that people dug up these old tweets from cat turd and he was singing a completely different tune about rogan when rogan was saying things that cat turd happened to like for example back in 2022 during rogan's anti-vax arc cat turd tweeted out the left crying about Joe Rogan 24-7 is making him 1,000 times more popular. He also says, Dear leftists, Joe Rogan can say anything he wants on his podcast, and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it but cry. So ironic. Mm, so I'm assuming that he's, uh, you know, not going to keep that same energy for Trump supporters who are now crying because of this supposed endorsement of RFK Jr. Now, this shitstorm grew so big that it presumably got Trump's attention because he just, out of the blue, decided to take a shot at, you guessed it, Joe Rogan on Truth Social writing, It will be interesting to see how loudly Joe Rogan gets booed the next time he enters the UFC ring. MAGA 2024. Yeah, so very petty, but also very on brand for Donald Trump. So you're only getting a small glimpse at the hysteria over Rogan's perceived endorsement of RFK Jr. over Trump. But what makes the situation even more interesting is that a lot of prominent Trump supporters like Matt Walsh and Tim Pohl, they were put in a very awkward position because of this. Because even though they support Donald Trump vocally, they're also personally friendly with Rogan and they want to make sure that they don't piss him off so that way he'll continue to invite them on his podcast. I mean, that is a platform with millions and millions of viewers. So you don't want to burn that bridge. The question is, how exactly did they respond to all of this? How did they, you know, thread that needle, if you will? Well, we'll get to Tim Pohl and Matt Walsh, but first let's talk about fascist influencer The Quartering, who shared a video of himself to Twitter urging the anti-Rogan bedwetters to just calm down. Real quick on all this dumb infighting and melting down. First it was Kyle Rittenhouse, now it's Joe Rogan. Look, Joe Rogan endorsed Bernie Sanders in 2016 and Trump won easily. Have Has everybody who is one of these mega influencers completely forgot about 
2016 and how every poll had Hillary ahead until the very end. Has everybody forgot how Cori Bush had a million Twitter followers and got beat by a relative nobody with 10,000 Twitter followers? Twitter is not real life. It's getting really cringe seeing so many of these quote unquote mega influencers melt down and react emotionally uh, to what is obviously a Kamala psyop. These images that get out that many people are saying are AI. The fact that she had a concert in the one in a wildly popular band's hometown, and it was a free concert of Bonnie Vare in Eau Claire, Wisconsin, their hometown. Everyone's like, oh my God, the Kamal phenomenon is real. Trump needs to fire his campaign manager. Oh my God. Holy crap. I'm getting real tired a lot of these mega influencers that are suddenly now doom pilling because the point of the Kamala PSYOP is exactly this and you're falling for it. Okay. I'm not going to call anyone out by name because, you know, it's not helpful. But the fact is, all these huge crowds and all these polls that are coming out. They have one goal, and that's to make you panic and make you demoralized and make you give up. And you guys are falling for it. It's it's so obvious. How can you not see this? Stop tweeting about how, oh, my God, the polls. Oh, Trump's got to make a major change. No, he doesn't. Totally agree, Mr. Quivering. I think that Trump should continue to conspiracy monger about whether or not Kamala Harris is actually black and ask questions about whether or not her crowds are AI generated, because I can assure you that that's exactly what voters care about. And the polls are definitely fake. So don't trust them and just assume that everything is copacetic and Trump has the winning strategy. Very smart. Now, obviously, putting aside my sarcasm, he doesn't think that the hysteria over Rogan seemingly endorsing RFK Jr. is necessary. And if I were a Trump supporter, I would agree with him because it makes them look unserious, although that's not something they really seem to care about that often. But still, he's not alone because self-proclaimed theocratic fascist Matt Walsh also put out the same sentiment in a lengthy statement defending Joe Rogan, arguing Joe Rogan is one of the most powerful cultural forces in America, and he is, at a minimum, very friendly to conservatives. He has repeatedly used his massive platform to amplify right-wing voices that would not be able to find that kind of audience anywhere else. He is a tremendous net good for the culture and for the conservative movement, even if he doesn't consider himself to be a part of the movement. The right-wing accounts attacking him and disowning him today for saying nice things about our K Jr. are acting foolishly at best. You don't turn on a guy who has been, is, and could continue to be a huge asset to you and your movement just because he didn't endorse Trump. That is strategically insane, petty, stupid, overly emotional, shooting yourself in the foot just to prove a point. There's way too much of this kind of shit among certain right-wing influencers at the moment. These specific people have no idea how to build and maintain an actual movement, no idea who the real power players are, no idea how to wield influence. They just tweet Republican boomer bait all day, he's talking about cat turd here, I assume, nonstop, and then turn and try unsuccessfully most of the time to destroy anyone who actually moves the needle. Now, Tim Pool seemingly agreed with that sentiment writing on Twitter, the cringiest thing imaginable right now is MAGA diehard shitting on Joe Rogan, make more enemies, burn more bridges. Now, Cat Turd very clearly felt called out by that and responded to Tim Pool saying, the cringiest thing imaginable right now is the podcast bros, diehard fence riders simping for Bernie bro Joe Rogan, who literally just endorsed weirdo RFK Jr. and refuses to interview Trump and pretend he's somehow on our side. Speaking of burning bridges, now Tim Pool actually hit back at Cat Turd saying, I think Trump is on track to lose, and this is why. Dems are a cult, that's ironic, will march in lockstep. MAGA diehards can't form alliances properly. Independents and post-libs will say fuck that. Registered Democrats outnumber GOP by almost 12 million. He then added, there's a reason they can't get a Rogan endorsement, and it's exactly this behavior. The top podcast, markedly independent, fair and honest, and they decide to go to war with it instead of trying to ally with it inject this straight into my veins. Now, now up until this point, you see intra-party warfare, caddy back and forths, and as enjoyable as all of this is, it all culminated in one of the most hilarious things that has ever happened. So, to prove his point after getting into a heated back and forth with Cat Turd, the esteemed, you know, uh, intellectual on the right, Tim Pool decided to, uh, I guess, throw his hands up and say, you know what? I'm voting for RFK Jr. now. He tweeted that out. But here's the thing. He didn't really mean it. He was just saying that to make Cat turn mad. But the problem is that not everyone took it as a joke, including 
RFK Jr., who responded to Tim's fake endorsement saying, I'm so grateful to you, Tim, for your confidence in me, but most of all, for your steadfast defense of the Constitution and relentless love for our country. Yeah, so uh, this is uh, this is a little, this is a little bit awkward to say the least. <laughs> How do I all of a sudden love American politics? So Tim Pool had to uh, smooth things over, but he didn't really know how. So he tweeted out, oof, I really stepped in it this time. Ha ha, holy crap, I'm voting for Trump, WTF. RFK Jr. then responded to that saying, there's plenty of time to change your mind. You know where to find me. I'll be working to unite America. Yeah, so uh, this entire situation is painfully cringeworthy. It's funny, but it's also cringeworthy. And I genuinely don't know who I feel more embarrassed for because Tim Pool, on one hand, shouldn't have expected people to automatically assume that he was joking because you wouldn't know that he was joking unless you tune into his show and see that he endlessly glazes up Donald Trump and is generally sycophantic. So it's pretty cringeworthy of him to think that he's so famous that people aren't just familiar with him, but they also know about his sense of humor, right? But it might be more embarrassing, honestly, for RFK Jr. because this man is a presidential candidate and here he is praising a podcaster, a far-right podcaster at that, because he thought that he got endorsed by him when this endorsement shouldn't matter. And if anything, you should be distancing yourself from somebody that divisive if you're serious about uniting America, right? But RFK, he's a charlatan. Uh, and the latest episode of Last Week Tonight with John Oliver explains why he really shouldn't be taken seriously by anyone. Having said that, though, his presence in this race is good because it's driving a wedge between Trump supporters and the more anti-vax wing of the Republican Party. People who are right-leaning but obsessed with vaccines, they're opting for RFK Jr., whereas they would probably opt for Trump instead. So, you know, if he's playing spoiler to Donald Trump, I'm here for it. But after endless crying and arguing and pan shitting and all this hysteria on the right, guess what happened? Joe Rogan, much like Kyle Rittenhouse, couldn't handle the heat. He couldn't handle not being in the good graces of MAGA, so he took to Twitter to clarify that he did not actually endorse RFK Jr. over Trump. And he explains, quote, For the record, this isn't an endorsement. This is me saying that I like RFK Jr. as a person, and I really appreciate the way he discusses things with civility and intelligence. I think we could use more of that in this world. I also think Trump raising his fist and saying fight after getting shot is one of the most American fucking things of all time. I'm not the guy to get political information from. If you want that from a comic, go to comic Dave Smith. He actually knows what he's talking about. Well, you heard it straight from the horse's mouth, folks. Joe Rogan says that Joe Rogan is stupid and you shouldn't take him seriously. Okay, duly noted. But I've just got to say, what a fucking cuck. This is cuck behavior. Just like Kyle Rittenhouse, he fell in line. And look, I get it, right? It's embarrassing, but I get it. At the end of the day, these people just care about one thing and one thing only, the bottom line. Even if Joe Rogan has the biggest podcast in the world, he knows that he's the, he's attracted a lot of Trump supporters over the last few years, so it would behoove him to not piss them off because that's a large portion of his viewership now. But in conclusion, none of this bickering by MAGA influencers actually matters. And I don't think it's gonna have an impact on the election, but it is a sign that MAGA world is panicking and with panic comes desperation and unforced errors. So them being worried is a really good sign. And I'll be honest, look, there's no substance here, but all of this is really damn entertaining to me. This is top tier political junk food. And I won't lie, I can't get enough of it. And I know that you all feel the same. Don't lie. Don't be embarrassed by it. Embrace it. We love seeing the other side melt down uh, because we're in a good spot and they know they're not in a good spot. So as it stands right now, don't know how long this is going to last, but I'm going to enjoy it while it's happening because the right is in full blown panic mode. They're shitting their pants. And look, you love to see it because they're bad people. They're fascists. So to see them squirm like this, I'm all for it. More of this, please. Vagina. Ha, 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 ha.